All right, it is three o'clock here on the East Coast, and it looks like I've got Cam joining now. Uh, let's see, Cam, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome, I can't see you yet. Oh, here we go, here you are, hello. Hey, how How's are you? Going? I'm good, how are you? Good. It has been quite the day. We've had the best users being very interactive. I really appreciate Yay. people being really um, chatty in the chat, asking questions in the Q&A. Um, so I'm excited for you to share next. I'm excited. Here we go. We're going to talk about SOPs. All right. My fave. All right. I'm going to go ahead. I unshared my screen. So if you want to share yours, you can. Um, I do want to let everyone know that I'll be monitoring Chat. So go ahead and chat things in and I can answer how you would do things specifically in Good Shuffle as Cam is describing them. Um, and then I will also collect any questions specifically for Cam so that when we get to the Q&A part at the end, uh, I can field those to you. So by all means, Cam Petty, owner of RenderCo, please take it away. All right. Hey, guys, how are y'all? I'm so excited to be here today. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and um, hopefully you can resonate with maybe some stuff that I'm going to talk about today. So I'm Cam. I am the owner of Render Events, Render Co. Um, here in Dallas, Texas. So um, I think there's a, people, a few people from Dallas here. Um, today's kind of a gloomy day out, but it's okay. I've got my big lights here and I'm excited to present today. So um, for those who don't know, I have an online course called Rental Biz Academy and a podcast for rental professionals called The Render Podcast. And so um, we put out episodes every single week on Wednesday. So tomorrow at 5 a.m. Central, there'll be another episode and I'm excited about tomorrow. So it'll be good. Um, I'm also a single mom to two littles. I've got a six-year-old boy named Brody and a three-year-old girl named Briley. They're super fun, super, um, Riley's getting into the three-year-old stage, which is always a joy for those who know about three-year-olds. Um, I also have a golden retriever pup who's eight years old named Rush. And yes, after the 80s rock band, Rush, um, I grew up on it. And so that's his name and he fits it for sure. Um, so I mentioned that I'm the owner of Render Events. I also have two other companies, Render Educate and Render Interiors. And so we do interior design. We do rentals, floral, event design under Render Events, and then I have Render Educate, which is where my podcast, online course, um, I have a mastermind and membership for rental professionals as well, and that's all under Render Educate. Um, and so it's a fun business that I've owned. Um, I started in 2010 doing wedding planning, and so that's where my background started was wedding planning. And so the coordinating side of things, I, uh, that's part of what I do. I, I, that's my jam. I love coordinating stuff. Um, and then in 2012, I had a client who was a lawyer at the time who said, you know what, I have all this stuff. And for those of you who were in business back in 2012, you know that it was heavy DIY. People are going to Pinterest and to Etsy and they were getting all this DIY stuff. So I think uh, burlap, lay, burlap and lace and mason jars and twine wrapped bottles and all the things, right? So she had DIY'd all this decor. Afterwards, she said, you know what? I am super busy. I'm a lawyer. I don't have time to go and sell all of this or keep all of these things. Do you want them? I'm sure you have other clients. And I said, yes, I do. I have so many clients who want the same stuff. So sure, I'll take it on um, and get it off your hands. And so that's what kind of kickstarted my love for rentals. And so from 2012 to today, we are still doing rentals and we've just integrated more services onto those between our interior design uh, brand, our floral event design, and now education as well for rental professionals like yourself. So um, that's just a little bit of background. There's a lot of details to my story, but those are just a few um, quick ones. I am an Enneagram 3. And so if you know anything about Enneagram 3s, you might know that I've got high energy. And for my students, I don't know if any of my students are here um, but if you are, would you please say something in the chat? I want to say hi to you. Um, but for those who know me um, or follow me on Instagram or anything like that, you know I'm super high energy. My team would probably tell you on a daily basis that if I had to rate or if they had to rate my energy level from a 1 to a 10, they would say I'm on a 20 almost all the time. And so you're going to get some of that today through the way that I'm talking to you, through the way that I'm explaining things. I'm going to give you lots of examples um, and I'm excited to get into it with y'all. 
Um, you guys have probably been here all day and you've got another day tomorrow, which we're excited about as well. You're gonna get a uh, look at our warehouse uh, tomorrow morning. I don't know if that was a secret or not, Karen, but spoiler alert, if it was. Um, no secrets, no secrets. <laughs> okay, good. So you're gonna see my uh, warehouse tomorrow, which I'm excited to show you. Um, hopefully, Karen, you got a laugh out of some of the things that we said in our, in our video, but. Um, so I wanna introduce you something that we do here on my team. And it's gonna probably play into my Enneagram number a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna ask you to get uncomfortable for just a quick second, for 30 seconds. I'm gonna ask you to get uncomfortable. And you might be totally in on this thing that I'm about to show you, or you might be totally out. Um, but this is what we're gonna do. You've been sitting in your chair probably all day and you might need a little energy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna introduce this thing to you. It's called our five, four, three, two, one trick. And on my team here, um, usually once a day, maybe every other day, depending on what our days look like, someone on my team will call out five, four, three, two, one, and then we dance it out like crazy and it gets our energy up. And so because we're talking about SOPs and it can sometimes be a little bit of a boring topic, we're gonna get our energy up. We're gonna get excited. Now I'm gonna ask you to take out some notebook and some pens so that we can write some of this down. But first I want us to get our energy level up, cool? Good shuffle team, are you on board or are you off board? I am so excited. I have been wanting to dance. Good, okay. I love to dance, it's one of my favorite things. I have dance sessions in my car on the way to work and on the way home. So if you're not into it, then you can just sit and like watch me dance or judge me, I don't care. But we're gonna do it, okay? So get ready, don't stand up yet. Sit in your chair. And as soon as I call out five, four, three, two, one, then we're gonna get up, all right? So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three. Okay. Anyone do it with me? Karen, did you do it? Or is that the only one? Yeah, yes, I did. I did. Okay, good. Woo. Okay, I'm out of breath for a second. But all right, I hope that was fun for someone in the audience. That's what we do on my team. So you're welcome. You've now been introduced to my team. All right, now that I'm catching my breath a little bit, because that was fun. We're gonna tell I'm gonna start this by telling you a little story. And I want you to Think of yourself in this story for a second, okay? So here's the story. It's called a bus test story. And you may have heard this before. I did not create this story. I'm sharing this story because I heard it. And it really made a difference when it came to our SOPs. And for those who don't know what an SOP is, it's called a standard operating procedure. It's the way that you do what you do. It's the how on what you do. It's step-by-step -step procedure on what you do. Oh, sorry, I'm like out of breath. Um, so here's the bus test story. A bus test is where you, as the owner, as the runner of your business, whatever your position is, that you decide someday you're going to take a walk, right? You're going to take a walk through your neighborhood, you're going to take a walk across the street, and you start walking, and a bus hits you. Bus hits you, and you are gone. You're in the hospital, maybe you survive, maybe you don't but you are hit by a bus. That's the bus test. If you are hit by a bus and your business is reliant on you, your business and your tasks are reliant on you and nobody else knows how to do what you do, what happens? What happens? Are you set up in your business? Is your business set up in a way that if you are hit by a bus tomorrow, that your business would still sustain, your business would still be there and be around? Um, would you be able to hand off this business to somebody else to be able to run for you if you were in the hospital for three weeks or four weeks or um, a year, you know, recovering from this bus hitting you? I know you might have been thinking that I had an acronym for this, like BUS or something, but no, it's literally a bus hits you, you're in the hospital, you don't make it, what happens to your business? If you thought about that, if you can picture yourself in that position and you say, my business wouldn't survive 
or maybe it might survive for a month or two, but then it doesn't because nobody knows what to do, or maybe somebody else has to come in and take it over and it is completely a different business. Well, if that's you, then I want you to listen up. The thing that I'm gonna tell you right now is bring out a notebook and a pen if you haven't already. You are five times more likely to remember something if you write it down. So I want you to write down the things that you wanna retain and you wanna remember, all right? So I just talked about an SOP and SOP is a standard operating procedure and Webster's dictionary would say that it's an established or pre-subscribed pre method to a followed routine for the performance of designated operations or in a designated situation. That's a lot of words. So I'm gonna give you a different definition. The definition of an SOP, standard operating procedure, is the how you do what you do. Simple, it's how you do what you do. It's a guideline, it's a clear path. It's a set expectation that says, here's what we do, now follow up what we do, all right? So it's the how on what you do what you do. Chris Hogan, if anyone is familiar with Chris Hogan, he's one of my favorite um, educators to follow. He talks a lot about servant leadership. He talks a lot about small business and how we run our small businesses. He's out of the Ramsey Network, and so um, he has a lot of the Ramsey principles and core values that he holds as well. Um, and I love the Ramsey Network. I think it's great. Um, and so this is something that he says all the time. He says, if you don't have clear expectations, you are giving your team the only option, which is to fail. You are only giving your option to your team to fail if you don't have clear expectations. And the way that we have clear expectations and the how we do what we do is through an SOP. It's through a standard operating procedure. And when you think about a standard operating procedure, it's just the standard. It's just the bottom line of what's expected. You can certainly do more than what's in your SOP, but this is the base. This is the very minimum of what you expect to happen within whatever task you are doing. And we're gonna talk about what requires an SOP in just a little bit, but this idea about an SOP, it's just the bottom line. This is the um, minimum work that needs to be done. And so we're gonna give some examples of what this looks like and, and how we put these together in just a little bit. But this is, I just wanna remind you, this is just the baseline. You can do more. Um, and if you do something more than three times, just a quick note, if you do something more than three times, the same exact task. Um, for example, if you email the same thing to three different people, you might just change their name or the location or something, requires an SOP. Three things, three times that you do the same exact thing needs an SOP. Before we had SOPs, we were a hot mess. We discussed things over and over and over again on how we did what we did. And we would remind ourselves, oh wait, what do we do again? When a client reached out, oh wait, what do we do again? So we were a hot mess. We just talked about it all the time and we couldn't retain the information because it was just here. It was just here. It wasn't on our computers. It wasn't on paper. It wasn't anywhere that we could say, hey, the answer's in the SOP. It was here. And so any new employee we had, they had to ask me how we did what we did. Or they had to ask Kaylee, who's been on my team for over three years, hey, Kaylee, how do we do this one thing? And so discussing it over and over, not only is it a waste of time, but it also costs you more in payroll because you're taking away whatever that person is doing away from their task, away from their job and their role of what they do to answer a question. And so we've been writing and we've been reviewing this process for the last eight years and it continues to evolve and change. So this is another thing that you need to keep in mind that when you create these SOPs, which are gonna be, I'm gonna tell you what types of SOPs and what forms that you're gonna create these in. But when you create these SOPs, they're not just set there to stay the same way the day that you make them. They're not meant to stay the same way the day that you make them. They're meant to change. They're meant to evolve. If we learned anything from 2020, it's that we can't be too comfortable in what is set, right? That we need to be able to um, flex. We need to be able to um, make different decisions when they're needed, right? And so when you make these, make sure that you keep in mind, hey, these can change at any point if they need to change. You don't want to change them too often, but you do want to have the option there that, hey, if, the, if it needs to change, it needs to change, right? So what exactly is an SOP? Like legit, what is it? Well, it's going to be in a few different types of forms. You could have photo SOPs. You could have video SOPs. You could have typed out document SOPs. Um, multiple different forms of how you can create these. And so we're going to talk about each of those. So photos as an SOP, these could be either supporting documents or literally the SOP itself. 
based on what you what what you're using it for. And so um, this is really great if you need to show something if it is more than just typing something out like if you need to say um, let's say, for example, um, good shuffle pro you're in there and you need to show exactly how you um, type an email to a client within the client uh, communication tab. Well, if you need to show exactly what you are going to write, you might take a photo or screenshot of that and put it in your SFP. It's a how or the what. Um, a video, this is, I would say videos are probably more common than photos. So a video is if it also needs more than just typing something out. And so if you need to show in Good Shuffle, like um, how to put together a quote for a new employee, instead of having them reach out to Good Shuffle or go find these documents, you could have some internal way that you do it. So let's say you put in the client first and then you put in the venue second, and then you update the um, project name. Then you put all those drop downs and then you start working on the quote or maybe you do all those things and you start to work on the notes before you work on the quote there's so many different ways that we can kind of do this and you have a specific way of how you want it done it needs an sop it needs an expectation like if you have this thing and you're like i expect you to change the project date every time and i expect you to put this and i expect this and i expect this if you don't have an sop for it they won't know and if you tell them once they still won't know they need to have it written down and so you might have a video of showing yourself doing this and you're talking over the video and you're saying, all right, the very first thing that we're going to do with this quote is we're going to type in their name. And it might be something that you can pull up, meaning they've rented from you before, but here's what we're going to do. And you explain it out through a video. You can put that video on YouTube and Vimeo and Dropbox, so many different places for organization, which at the end, we're going to talk about organization and where you actually store these things. But for now, we're just going to talk about what types of SFPs are going to create. So you've got photos, you've got videos, um, really the step-by-step -step tutorials of showing something that's going to require a video. Um, typed out documents are probably going to be your most common thing. And so this is going to be um, typed into a Word document or a Google Docs document or somewhere on a line that someone can pull that up really quickly. Um, and you might also print those out and put them in binders for your team. Um, we're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. And so just an overview, it could be in binders and it should also be somewhere online. Um, the world is moving online. So if you're not online, if you don't have these online, move them online. Um, what else can our SFPs involve? Well, they can involve your softwares, your logins. Most people probably have more than just Good Shuffle Pro. And so you probably have an email login. You might use Slack. You might use uh, Google Drive. There's so many things that we all use for our companies. And so having some place that, hey, here's where the softwares are and here's the logins to each of the softwares, that's really good to have in an SOP as well. And again, this is a step-by-step -step of what you do, how you do it. And so these need to be very, very um, specific. Um, all right, so what things should have an SOP? Let's give some examples of what should have an SOP. And if you have questions along the way, I've got the chat box up there. So if I need to expand on something more, please tell me. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to do some Q&A at the very end of this. So hold your questions if you have specific questions um, or put them in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, so the things that require an SOP that I would recommend having for sure at the very minimum having are going to be these. So obviously, if you are in the events industry or you are using Good Shuffle Pro, you probably do some deliveries, right? You're probably getting in your truck or getting in some sort of vehicle and going somewhere. And so that should require an SOP. You're going to talk about in that SOP, um, how are you going to load up your trucks or your trailers, or your cars, or how whatever vehicle you're using, how are you going to load those up? Are you going to call or get a text? Are you going to send a message somehow to the client letting them know you're coming? What about when you get on site? What are you going to do on site? How are you going to do your delivery? What are you going to do first? What are you going to look at? What tools or supplies do you need? And so you're going to go through this whole process and you're going to walk step by step. How am I doing this thing, this uh, thing called a delivery? Pickup. So when you go back to pick it up, it might be very similar to the delivery, but you still need an SOP to show, hey, what do we do on a pickup? So if you have crew that only does pickup or you have crew that only does delivery, that they have a specific set of rules and expectations of how this thing is done. Uh, communication with clients. This should be an SOP as well. There's likely some emails that you send that are either very similar or the exact same um, every time. So if you are um, responding to a first time inquiry, 
probably have a very similar set of communication that you send to that person and the other person that is inquiring with you. Um, when you are confirming all those logistics for the event, there's probably a very similar way that you're communicating with them. And so having a communication with your clients as an SOP is really great. Um, we have this through our canned emails. And so um, we have all those in an SOP. Um, any marketing efforts. So if you use Instagram or Pinterest or LinkedIn or YouTube or, you know, there's so many freaking <laughs> social media platforms out there and marketing platforms. So if you use any marketing platform, if you do any marketing efforts, which you should be doing if you're not doing already, um, those require some SOPs. How do you do that? How do you plan for that? What do you know? Um, how do you know what to post and what caption to use and hashtags and all those things? SOP. Put an SOP together for that. Um, your sales process, your internal and your external sales. We call this um, either hunting for a sale or you're fostering a sale. And so if you're hunting a sale, that means you're externally going out and finding a sale. So that could be through networking events. It could be through grabbing coffee with planners. It could be through so many different ways. And so if you're externally going out and hunting a sale, this is going to need its own process. How do you do that? Now, what is the way that you do that? What's the communication that you use with them? How do you find that? Um, internally, if you're just getting an internal inquiry, so through your website or your wish list, if you're using the Good Shuffle Pro um, API, so many different ways that people can inquire with you. It might even be through social media. So what does the sales process look like when they come internally and when you go out externally to go find a sale? Um, training documents is a great SOP as well. Every position on your team, you probably train very similar. And so if I had um, a salesperson that I train, if I hired another salesperson, I'm probably going to train them very similarly. And so you want to create some um, SOPs around this. We have a great um, in my opinion, a great hiring process of how we do our hiring and our training. We call it the Render University. When you uh, join our team, you go through Render University. And so we have um, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. That's your first week. And you're kind of going through those first freshman classes through that. And then the next week, you're going to go through 201, 202, 203, 204, 205. Super fun. Um, maybe I'll do another talk on that with Good Shovel Pro another time. Um, but you want these training documents to have an SOP. You probably train people very similarly. You wanna make sure you're not leaving things out. Um, the other thing is a fulfillment. So not only is it when you are getting a sale for a uh, client, but you also are going out and delivering it, but what happens in between? So when they book with you and you actually go out and um, deliver that, what happens there? Are you gonna communicate with them? Is there any logistics that need to be taken care of. And so you might want to do that. There's so many ways that you can do an SOP. Those are just some very quick ones for rental companies specifically. Um, and florists. Florists can use the same thing as well if you're a florist or a DJ company. Um, but you might have some additional things that you do in your business. Obviously, we have an education platform. So we have SOPs for the education platform, for our podcasts, and for um, Instagram lives when we go live and, and things like that. And so you just want to make sure that everything that you do the step-by-step -step process of how you do something has an SOP, All right? So how are we gonna put this together? Well, there's a few things that I need you to know, whether you're a solopreneur or you're part of a team that you need to know first before you set out to actually do these. And I'm gonna to talk to you as a solopreneur and I'm gonna to talk to you as a team member of how to put these together. But before you do this, no matter what you are, who you are in your business, I want you to first define your why. Why do you do what you do? I think it's always important to remember what our why is when we go out to do marketing, when we go out to do training, when we go out to do really anything. In my team, we have six core values that we hold very tightly to. And every week on Monday mornings when I have our team meeting, we recite these core values every single week. And um, anytime that we have a big team meeting, when we do training meetings, we recite our SOP or we <laughs> recite our core values. And so um, the very first thing I want you to do before you go set out to do these SOPs or go revise your SOPs is define your why. I think it's very important to remember why are you doing what you do and reset those intentions. And the second thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to um, want to think about how do you want your customers and your team to feel on the other side of this SOP? Do you want them to feel um, more knowledgeable? Do you want them to feel valued? Do you want them to feel uh, cared for? This also goes more for um, not only the customer, the paying client, but more than just the paying client. What about the mother of the bride? What about the planner? What about the other vendors 
Um, what about um, any other companies that are associated with this? And so you wanna think about it from everyone's perspective. Anyone who's experiencing your company at any point during the time of your bookings um, all the way through post-event, how do you want your team, your customers and additional people, how do you want them to feel? Or define what that means before you set out to do these SOPs. And then I want you to think about this from two different perspectives when we are creating these. First is what is the intention and how can we be more intentional through every single piece, every single step that we go through in this SOP. And the second thing is how can we anticipate what might throw us off? Intention and anticipation. Those are the two things that you need to keep top of mind when you're going through these SOPs. All right, so for those who are solopreneurs, I know that there's probably quite a few of you solopreneurs who are here today. We're gonna to talk about how do you put these together when you don't have a team to help you put them together. The first thing that I recommend to my solopreneurs is have a friend come in and shadow everything you do for a week or a day or however long it takes. Have them shadow what you do and write everything down. So have them transcribe. When you're going to email someone, what is it that you do to email them? When you go to make a quote for someone, what are you doing to do that? And so have someone come in as a third eye to kind of see what you're doing and write those things down. Um, anytime that you do something, so if you go write an email or if you go create a quote or if you go uh, do anything, really anything in your business, just go ahead and write that down on a separate document as you're doing it. And so have the second document maybe up all the time on your computer and say you're going to go write an email to someone. You're going to think, okay, what am I doing? How am I going to do this? What mindset am I in? What do I need to tell them? I'm going to go make an SOP for this. And then the other option I have for you for the solopreneurs is take a week to focus on these. Just figure out some time, make some time to put these SOPs together. It's very important. And you might be thinking, I'm a solopreneur. Like I don't have anyone else who I need to show these expectations to. So why do I need to do them? Well, because at some point you're probably going to hire someone. Usually that's the plan. Every rental company I've talked to, I have 260 students in my rental biz academy, every single one of them, whether they've started, they haven't started, they're a solopreneur, they have a team, whoever they are, they plan to hire someone at some point. And I recommend you doing it before you hire. So as a solopreneur, figure out some time to do it. I did not make SOPs before I hired. I will tell you right now, I'll be the first one to tell you, I did not make SOPs before I hired and I regret it. I actually bought a course on how to hire. And inside of that course, it told me I need to make SOPs before I hired. And I never carved out the time to do it. I always figured I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. I have all these things to do and I'm so ignoring them, so I'm doing all the things. Well, right now, during a pandemic, would be a great time to do these SOPs. You're probably not as busy as other people um, or you're probably not as busy as other times in your business. And so it's a great time to put together these SOPs. And remember, you can change these SOPs. And so if you're brand new in business or if you're only in year one or two of business, you can change your SOPs, but get it down on paper. It's easier to change them than it is to create them. And so just get them done. Okay, what if you're a part of a team or you run a team, you're the leader of your business, how can we actually create these SOPs? One option is you can have each team member write their own SOPs. Um, I'm a part of a networking association called NACE, National Association of Catering and Events. Good Shovel Pro is actually a national partner of them. Um, and so we love uh, seeing them every time that we do a NACE thing. But in NACE, um, I'm a board member of it. And so here in DFW, I, um, right, this year I'm over community service, but a few years ago when I joined the board, we had to do our own SOPs for our position on the board. And it was tough to do in our first year doing it and I didn't know what I was doing, but put these SOPs together. And now every single year, we just tweak them a little bit um, based on the position, how we handle that position. And so. You could do the same thing where each team member is going to write their own SOPs. You could also do it as a team. So have a big team meeting, maybe it lasts a couple days or a couple weeks, and you're going to put these SOPs together and kind of weigh in on what, uh, what happens. And if, you know, there's overlap of, you know, Kaylee does this one way and I do it another way. Well, let's wrap those together and see how we can do it better. We did this in 2018 as a team. And we've revised them every single year during our annual planning meeting every December. And so, like I said, it's easier to just do it, just get it done, and then set a time every year to just come back and, and revise those and change them. Okay, I mentioned that I want you to anticipate 
every time that you were putting these SOPs together. Well, what do I mean by anticipate? Well, we all know that things don't always go to plan, right? This happens all the time. Nothing is perfect 100% of the time. We hope that it is, and we try to make it perfect as much as possible, but sometimes things happen. And uh, like, for example, a couple of years ago, probably closer to five or six years ago, I went out to go do a delivery. This is when I solo Panor. Showed up in my warehouse, hooked up the truck and trailer, set out, got everything loaded, and realized that the, um, what's the cap that goes over the tires? That thing came off and it was laying on the tires. And so if I were to drive, that would come off. Thankfully at the time I was right across the street from a truck company that fixed trucks. And I was like, hey, I need some help. I need someone to just like reattach this for me. So they were able to do that. I don't currently live close to someone who can do that for me. And so now we have in our SOPs, hey, we're gonna anticipate something not going according to plan. Your trucks might have issues. You might have uh, tires that go flat overnight. You might have a battery that goes bad. You might have inventory that breaks. You might double book something accidentally. Um, whatever that looks like, there's going to be something that throws you off. It would be naive of you to tell yourself, nothing will ever go wrong. It'll always be this way and it'll be perfect every time. That would be naive and that would be foolish of us to think that. So we want to anticipate before something does actually throw us off. So instead of reacting to something and just figuring it out on spot, which usually we're pretty good at doing, let's make a plan and anticipate what might happen ahead of time. I'm gonna give you two examples here. And the first example is something that we're actually dealing with in real time. Here in Dallas, it's usually pretty good weather. In fact, Karen and I did a live, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago or something. And it was like 75 degrees, sunny, it was beautiful, it was amazing. Well, this week, it is supposed to snow on Saturday and it's supposed to be freezing cold. It's supposed to, I think the high is like 25 degrees, which is very odd for Dallas, Texas. Um, but this week it's supposed to be cold, it's supposed to be rainy, it could be some ice, could be some snow. Um, the snow won't last, I guarantee you it's probably gonna leave within an hour, but nonetheless, we're gonna have some weather issues happening. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, you probably know that there's rain, rain plan could happen um, at any given moment. And so we want to anticipate weather that might throw us off. And so here's a very real example of how we anticipate weather throwing us off. And so if weather comes up, we have three options of what we're gonna do. So if we look it up, when we say, you know, it's gonna snow on Saturday. Well, first of all, we're gonna assess the weather. We're gonna see what is the inclement weather that's happening during the event or before the event or after the event based on kind of our schedule and when, when we're delivering and all of that. And we wanna contact the client and see what rain plan they have or what snow plan ha they have or whatever um, plan they have already. Cause we don't wanna necessarily make our own plan if they already have one. So we wanna check with the planner first. If there's no rain plan, if the planner says, oh, we thought it was gonna be great, which happened a few years ago and it totally got rained out. Um, we're gonna help come up with a solution. We're gonna say, hey, what if we rent a tent? Or uh, what if we move everything inside? Or what are some things that we can help assess and um, assist with uh, when it comes to creating this rain plan or snow plan? Um, if the client refuses to uh, create a solution, we're gonna send an inclement weather waiver and have them sign off on it. And so I'm literally telling you exactly what we do. Contact the planner. If there's no rain plan, we try to help put together a rain plan. If they don't want to use a rain plan, we have what's called an inclement weather waiver that they're gonna sign uh, before we come. The inclement weather surrounding the event, so if it doesn't happen during the event and the planner on site or someone on site is like, hey, it's fine, we're good, no big deal, we're gonna continue going how we are. But whether it's um, icy before we come or it's icy late at night or something is gonna prevent us from doing our job well, we wanna assess the conditions of the road. So um, do we need to put chains on tires? Do we need to have uh, different transportation? Maybe we don't take a big box truck that has um, two wheel drive or front wheel drive because here in Dallas, there's not a lot of four wheel drive here. Um, or do we need to have maybe a four wheel drive truck and have different transportation? Uh, maybe we need a different route. Maybe it's going to be rainy. It's going to flood out some roads that are we we're supposed to take on the way there. So maybe we need to figure out a different route. Um, the second option that we can do with this is we need to add a buffer into the schedule. And so if there's going to be snow on Saturday night, like this weekend, perhaps we create some sort of a plan that says, 
okay, crew, instead of coming in at 12 p.m., why don't you guys come in at 11 a.m. so we make sure that we have plenty of time to get there in, in case we have to go slower. And then the third is we just wanna communicate with our client. Every single time that anything changes, we wanna make sure we're communicating with that client. So that's a real-time example of how we've anticipated weather happening and what we as a team are gonna to do to overcome that. Okay, another example that you may have experienced in your own business is inventory is damaged. I hate it when that happens. When you go to go get the thing off the rack, you go get your chair, you go get your plate, you go get your whatever it is that you're getting, pull it off the rack, it's damaged. Oh, hate it when that happens. Okay, so what are we gonna do when that happens? Because we can't be naive again. We can't say it's never gonna happen. My inventory is gonna be perfect 100% of the time because there's gonna be a chance that it might not. So the first option is, can we pull the same inventory to stock and replace that item? So do we have more of that that we can just go ahead and pull that without conflicting with other orders? Can we replace it with a similar inventory? So if you're a DJ, for example, and you have a very specific speaker that you're supposed to bring and the client requested this certain speaker because it um, has the loudest sound, I know nothing about speakers, so I could be totally making this up, but just go with me here. Let's say the client specifically wants this one speaker and it's broken, you have none to replace it. Well, can we find something similar to it and just communicate with the client, hey, there was an issue that came up, we picked something very similar and we're gonna bring this. Um, both when, when we do this, if we're going to replace it with the same item or replace it with something similar, we do need to make sure that we check with Good Shuffle, our software, to make sure that that item is not being used on another item. This especially is true when you have, um, and perhaps you've been in a situation like this where you have 20 events on one single weekend and you have lots of overlap that might happen. So we want to make sure that Good Shuffle is telling us, hey, are we good to actually take this item or does it need to go out later today? Um, the other option is, can we source it at another rental company? So let's say, for example, um, I have a few pieces out in my back that I know for a fact that other rental companies very close to me have as well. And so if it's damaged, if there's nothing to replace it, if that one can't go out, can I call up my other rental company friends and say, hey, girl, I actually need to rent that other thing. Do you have that available? Can I rent that from you uh, for today because I have something that's damaged? Um, and then the other option, and this we always need to do this, is we're gonna contact the client to let them know what our solution is. If they are like, yes, great, this is a great op option. We're gonna send the item, but we're also gonna bring a second option. Again, we need to check with Good Shuffle to make sure that we can actually bring that other option um, and, and make sure that's bringing, uh, coming there. We're also gonna make a note um, at the venue what the client actually chose on the paper. And so we're gonna make sure that we're communicating with our client. If the client says, nope, that doesn't work for me, I don't want that, I wanna make sure that I get exactly what I paid for and what I'm expecting, um, then continue to try to source and as a last ditch effort, you might have to refund that person. So again, we're anticipating some issues that might come up to make sure that we are um, good to go for that. So I want you to think of some scenarios and see what could go wrong. What could go wrong in your company? And then I want you to plan ahead for that and make a plan for that before it actually happens, all right? All right, so when it comes to training, I know that some of you might be thinking, my team will never do this. They'll never do this. They've been working for me forever. They'll never go according to SOP. They're just gonna do what they've always been doing, right? Well, I'm gonna give you two options here. You have either new employees or you have existing employees. For the new employees, you're gonna make the expectation that you need to follow this plan. This is how we do what we do, and so you need to follow that. They don't know any difference, so it's all good. For your existing employees, if you get into a situation where you're like, they'll never, ever go according to this, they're gonna do what they've always been doing. Well, tell them that, hey, this is the new standard way that we're gonna do things. You might recognize that there are some similarities into how we've always done things and what these SOPs say, but I want you to make sure that we're gonna uh, go according to this. You are probably the leader of your company. You might be the boss of your company, they need to respect what you're saying. Um, have a training day with them. This is something that we did when we started our SOPs and anytime that we've revised our SOPs, we put together this training day with our team. And you know, there's been people on my team that have worked for me, with me for five years. They probably would probably say, look, I've been doing the same thing for this, for this whole time and it works out great. Why would I change what I'm doing? Well, I've told them, hey, this is, this is what we're doing. And so we want to have a big training day, make sure everyone's on the same page. Refer back to it weekly and make sure that you're holding them accountable to it. 
um, and then have some follow-up trainings. And so what we do is we do one big training every year to make sure that, hey, any SOPs we had this last year, here's some changes that may have happened. And so we're going to train you on that again. And then maybe you have quarterly or um, every six months you come back and you say, all right, hey, how's it going? Where are we at? Do we need to change anything? Um, let's do a mini training day again. Um, and then make sure that your uh, managers, anyone who's representing your team out there are doing it and they're keeping everyone accountable as well. Um, I'll tell you a quick story when it comes to this. So um, uniforms and how we show up is in our SOPs. We want to make sure that we're all dressed similarly. Um, I provide uniforms to my team. And so um, I sometimes will make surprise visits to some of my deliveries. And there was, uh, gosh, probably a year, probably about a year ago in February last year before the pandemic hit, uh, we did an event and I showed up on the delivery. It was like, hey guys, I was just in the area, figured I'd pop by. And I noticed that one of my team members was out of uniform. He, um, our uniform is usually black shorts or black uh, golf pants, black golf shorts or back black golf pants with a black polo. And either black jacket, black hat, black shoes, black socks. We want to make sure that we are um, just kind of in the background and we're not making too much noise with our uniform. That's just our brand and how we do things. That might not be your brand and that's totally fine. That's our brand. And so I showed up and this one guy, he was in jeans with a black polo and black everything else. And so I said, hey, I'm not going to say his name because there's some people here from Dallas and I don't want you to know who it is. But I said to him, I said, hey, um, you're out of uniform. You know that we have black shorts and black pants. And so I just want to give you a friendly reminder that you are going to need to make sure that you change before your next stop um, and get back into uniform. And so I kept them ac accountable to that. Um, and it never happened again. I called him out and he realized, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm not in uniform. Um, I also in team meetings, so we have a team meeting every Monday. I'll just ask some specific questions off the SOP. I know the SOP very, very well. And so it's, I don't usually have to refer back to it, but I'll just say like, hey, are we texting the client every time that we are leaving and going to the location? And they have, in real time, they can tell me exactly what we're doing. So they're just checking in with your team, make sure that they're actually doing it and um, keep them accountable to it. If you just put it out there once and um, leave them alone with it, it's hard to tell if they're actually doing it. And so you wanna make sure that you're just keeping them accountable to it, right? So how does this, um, SOP thing, how does it integrate with Good Shuffle? Well, you likely have a way that you use Good Shuffle. Um, I'm sure that some of you use Good Shuffle maybe a little bit differently than I use Good Shuffle. I've actually popped in and here a couple times and there's some things that I've learned about Good Shuffle. So thanks for putting that on. Um, and unless you've taken our online course, Rental Biz Academy, you might do it very different from us. If you took our course, you probably do it very similar to us because we, we train a little bit in there. Um, but if you are using Good Shuffle Pro and you need to use uh, our SOPs, you probably have a step-by-step -step way that you do things. Your sales process, your booking process, your fulfillment process, you should have an SOP that shows exactly what you do. Because if you're hiring someone new, they probably don't know what, SOP, or what Good Shuffle Pro is unless they've used it before. And even if they use it before, you probably have a different way that you're using it. So you want to make sure that you have an SOP that shows exactly how you're using Good Shuffle Pro and everything else in your business. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about is organization. Where are you going to store all these things, your videos, your photos, your typed out documents, um, anything that you use in your business? Um, so the first option is going to be Google Drive or Dropbox. Those are really great storage options. You want to make sure it's somewhere where anyone can access it on your team. You can just share a link with them and pull it up. Um, I can usually pull up my SOPs on my phone um, and be able to quickly get to them if I need to. And so you want to make sure that it's, it's easily accessible and Google Drive or Dropbox is a great option for that. If you have videos, you might be able to embed those straight into your documents. But otherwise, um, like for example, we have YouTube channels that we do some of our education on. And then we have some sub YouTube channels where we're just going to put those SOPs on there. And so we have like an education YouTube channel that we put all of our education SOP videos on, our events channel that we put all of our events SOPs on and so on and so forth. And so YouTube or Vimeo is a great option to host those videos if you don't wanna host them in your drive or your Dropbox that can take up some storage. And then um, printing them out and having binders in a specific spot in the office. Hey, here's where the SOPs are. That's a great option to have. Um, or having binders with those SOPs at a specific location wherever that task is done. And so 
if you have one that is um, maybe it's all deliveries and pickups, maybe you store that in your trucks. You have multiple binders for multiple trucks and you put them out there. Or maybe they're in your warehouse. Um, maybe they're in a specific office. Like if you have a big team, I've seen um, teams in like you have your sales team in an office, you have your marketing team in an office. So you put those in those places. Um, so those are some just quick organization tools for you. Um, I have a couple things I'm going to share with you. Let me share my screen here. Um, I have our SOP bundle that I would love to share with you guys. Let's see. Okay, share. All right, so here is, you know, let me see if I put this in full screen. All right, so um, we have our SOP bundle template. Uh, we do charge for this. This is a template that we've created and it has every single SOP that we have in our business and you are welcome to check it out. There's a QR code. So if you take your phone and you hold it up there, it should scan it and pull it right up. And for showing up today and being a part of this summit, you can use the code good summit for 15% off of that bundle. And so we'd love to share that with you. Um, I'll keep that up for a second. And then the other thing I mentioned at the very beginning of this, we have a, a podcast for rental professionals. And so um, our podcast is called the Render Podcast. It's available on Apple or Spotify. If you use that QR code, that'll pull up the podcast. And so um, we have tomorrow will be 45 episodes. And a lot of the episodes are very um, specific on rental procedures and how you do what you do. So um, check out the Render Podcast. We'd love to um, have you as a listener. And if you guys have anything that you guys want to hear, shoot us a DM on Instagram and we'll put together an episode for you. And then lastly, if you want to get in touch with us on social media or our website, here's some links there. You're welcome to um, email me any questions that you might have after hearing this uh, chat about SOPs at info at the um, Follow us on Instagram and our website is up there as well. Um, and I am happy to answer any questions that might come up. I'll toggle between some of these uh, slides so you can get those QR codes again, if you'd like. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. This is wonderful. Um, if people have questions, please, please feel free to send us in the Q&A. Feel free to send us a chat. Um, someone is asking for the code again for the uh, discount on your standard operating procedures bundle. If you want to put that up. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention, some notes I took during the session, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, you know, this idea of, you know, mixing together standard operating procedures and Good Shuffle, which I just love. I think, you know, we talk about how Good Shuffle can do work for you in terms of training folks, but, you know, that's not to say that you don't also need a standard operating procedure. So one of the things I was making a note on is the reason they go so hand in hand is let's say, you know, you talked about backup plans in relation to weather or things like that. You know, we've been mentioning a lot of things like alternates and packages and these kind of inventory components to the software. And one of the things I think is a great example is it's much easier to give someone a standard operating procedure that says, if there is an item with a conflict, check the messaging tab. Okay, that's specific. That's not check when's the last time I worked with this client. Well, now I've got to, where do I look for that? Do I look in? Right. you know, email, do I slap someone? You're just going to immediately get a million questions. Click the blue, you know, if there's a, a conflict, check if it is not signed yet, blue. Then click on that project, open the messaging tab, like making it very specific, mm -hmm. but then also making it easy of, if you know that the conflict exists and it can't be replaced, click on alternates and see if an alternate is available. Rather than saying, here are the alternates for every item in our inventory. <laughs> Uh, or, you know, again, then they have to text you, they have to Slack you, they have to whatever, however you communicate on your team. You just, when you create kind of a half-baked SOP, you're not really helping that much. You're not really, it's, they're just going to say like, what is it, what does step number three mean? But if you say very specifically what's in the software, or you say, you know, swap it for an alternate and the alternate is already built into the software, then you can keep it nice and tight and clear and clean yeah. and use SOPs for what they're for, which is, to not get harassed with a million questions right. a day from your employees. Yeah, if you have these SOPs, like I said at the very beginning, it's how you do what you do. And so if you're super specific and you say, this is exactly what I do in each of these situations, especially when you're anticipating, you're going to reduce the amount of Slack messages, text text messages, phone calls, 
like before we had SOPs, we had um, some lamps that we rented out for weddings. And I would get the question all the time, hey, where are the light bulbs? I can't find the light bulbs. Where are the extension cords? Like they're in the warehouse. What, what do you mean? And so we put an SOP together that said, okay, if you have pieces that have additional um, units that go with it, like light bulbs or extension cords or anything else, here's where you can find where it is. Go to the order. Yeah. You're going to see it in the drop down or go uh, to this specific spot in the warehouse that has this, like literally anything that you have that you know that you might get a question on, like put it in SOP. And that's a great example of another thing which I'm passionate about, both in terms of Good Shuffle, you know, getting your Good Shuffle Pro account set up really well, but also getting, you know, things like this in order. The number one thing we hear from people is, I don't have time. You don't understand. I'm so busy. I don't have time to sit down and create a stop standard operating procedure. I don't have time to enter each of my components of a tent as a package, which just crushes me because this is to free up your time. Yes, it takes a little bit of extra time on the front end. Yes, I am probably suggesting you take one of your days off and do this or take, you know, a late night working. But who here wouldn't want to take one late night working to save hours and hours for the rest of for the rest of their lives. I mean, I am all about that. I'd much rather sit and do the hard work of creating an you know, operating procedure, yeah. creating a better program with my software system so that I can save even sometimes, you know, fractions of a second each day add up, fractions of a minute, that stuff adds up. Yeah. And it's really not to take your time, it's to save your time. Well, there are certain times that when we didn't have SOPs, I had to leave uh, my son's soccer game early to go help out and go answer a call. Or um, when my daughter was, um, she had a little recital for uh, Christmas and someone was like, Hey, I can't find this. Or, or, you know, this thing is damaged. And what else do I say? And I'd have to step out to go answer the phone to do something. So not only is it going to save you time and payroll later on, but it's going to save you from maybe some of those family events that you want to be a part of. Some of those soccer games that your kids are going to have or um, Christmas recitals from school um, and having SOPs is a, a guaranteed way that you're not going to have to answer the question in the middle of a soccer game that you really want to be. Present. Right. Well, and it's funny. So that also makes me think of another thing I wanted to mention. So you talked about the bus theory, which I've heard before. I actually do have to say since, you know, getting hit by a bus is pretty dark. Um, I had a boss once maybe not my favorite boss, but I'll give him credit for one thing, which was uh, he called it the tuba camp theory. So he would say, what happens if you go off to tuba camp? A little lighter than the bus theory. Yeah, <laughs> the I mean, kind of the concept, bus is definitely you know? a thing. Okay, so maybe you, we can change it to be you get COVID and you have to oh be gosh. in a for, you know, four weeks. That might be a little bit more realistic. <laughs> Okay, we're going to dark places. We're going to keep it too. Yeah, I mean, Maybe we can have something cuter later. You know, right here, so I don't get it now. <laughs> Maybe it's something like really great. Like you get a all expenses paid uh, vacation I'm here to for that. Hawaii. I'm here for that. Yeah. And then what? And I remember when I first learned this from that boss about the tuba camp, Hawaii, whatever it may be. I was really young in my career, and I remember kind of feeling like. Well, I want to be important. I don't want to be able to go away and things keep running because what if I lose my job? And I think sometimes even business owners can feel that, right? Like, well, I'm so valuable that they need to ask me questions. But as time went on, I realized that the things that you can automate, those are not the things that are going to get you job guarantees. You know, that's not impressive. Right. Needing to know where the light bulbs are in the warehouse, like anyone can know that. It's not right. hard. Obviously, you should be providing significantly more valuable things to your business, your yeah. knowledge of events, your creativity, your ability to rally a team together, your ability to always, I mean, even anticipate traffic and weather and get things to places on time, whatever it is, there are more unique things that you're bringing to your company and things that can be automated, uh, things that can have a process to them. Those aren't the things that are going to get you, you know, job security because right. that's what technology is built to do. Yeah. So, you know, think about the tuba camp as like, yes, everyone should miss you. Everyone should like having you around and think that you right. help the team. Right. But the day-to-day -day process stuff is not really, that shouldn't be your secret sauce in your career. Right. Well, I'll also add that, you know, if you ever want to go sell your company at one point, like maybe that's in your long-term plan. Maybe it's five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, you want to sell your company or you want to hand it down to 
um, a loved one, like a, a child of yours or something like that, if you want to get rid of your company at some point, other than just um, selling everything off and closing down, like if you want to sell your company, and I'm talking about this from someone who has bought out two rental companies before, SOPs and having how you do what you do is only something that's going to add value to your company. It's only going to add value because you're literally handing off, hey, here's how I do what I do, instead of just saying like, all right, good luck, have fun, see you later, call me if you need anything, or don't call me at all because I don't want to be involved. It's something that you can hand off and say, hey, here's what I do, and now you're going to have a, a template, you're going to have a, a very clear picture on how I do what I do. So that's also another good reason to have that. That might right. be, you and it might not be, but... You went in and bought a company that said like, oh, well, this company only works if we've got, you know, George running the warehouse, trust me, because everything else is a mess. Like, you're, you're right. like well, I, it's great that George is so great, but I don't want to be committed to having to also hire this guy. I don't know. Like, you want to make sure that you're like, this process is seamless. Yeah. This inventory looks great. You may also have some people you want to recommend hiring, but that shouldn't yeah. be the only thing keeping, keeping the whole thing together. Well, the two companies that I bought out, so I bought out one company in 2016, and then I bought out another company in 2018 and neither of them had SOPs. And so when I inherited all their clients, cause they had clients while they were um, selling, like they didn't just not have any clients. They had clients They had, I think the first company had like 35 booked contracts or something. And then the second one had 11 that they had to fulfill. And so we inherited all of those and we didn't know what their communication style was like. We didn't know what their emails looked like prior to, we didn't know what they, um, you know, how they communicate with their client or what expectations they set up with their client. And had I known that we would have bypassed a lot of some, maybe some sticky points and some frustrations that we may have had when it came to the clients, because uh, they signed a contract, agreed to whatever their process was, we inherited them. And then now they're stuck in this new process without me having any knowledge of um, what they were expecting. And so even if you're buying out another company at some point, I've had quite a few uh, DMs over the years of like, hey, you bought out someone, how can I buy out someone? You're welcome to reach out to me if you'd like to. Um, but if I would have had that, I would have made that transition with those clients a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier. Sure, yeah. Well, thank you again, Cam, so much for taking the time, for sharing your knowledge with us. Really, really appreciate it. We've got a Absolutely. lot of people Podcast chatting in. Time. Some people saying they're excited about the course that they're taking with you or have taken with you. Some people about the um, templates. Um, obviously there's a wonderful episode of the podcast with yours truly, if you're not yeah. just totally sick of hearing my voice after the next two days. So, uh, thank you again. We really appreciate your time and your expertise. Yes, of course. Well, I'm excited to be here to share all of that with you guys. Awesome. Thanks again. And we will see you uh, shortly, Cam. All right. See ya.